Good morning! It is a beautiful morning here in sunny Tampa. Yay! Um, I'm excited about that. I'm even more excited about talking to y'all about, about pregnancy and foods that you guys can eat to create happy, hale, hearty babies. All right? I am so excited about creating a new generation of healthier babies. Basically, what's been going on uh, for the last many generations is that we're getting weaker and weaker. So guys, it's your duty uh, to create hale and hearty babies because that is our future. So I'm going to run through a bunch of foods with you and give you the, the good news and the bad news. All right. First, white flour and white sugar. I'm sure you've heard it before, but I'm going to keep telling, I'm going to keep pounding that in. If there's anything, if there is a first step that you want to take, it is get white flour and white sugar out of your life. Now, White flour is disguised by our beloved food manufacturers in all kinds of ways. It can say white flour. It can say flour. It can say wheat flour. Um, wheat flour is white flour. It has to say whole wheat. Uh, so if it doesn't say whole wheat, it's not whole wheat. It's white flour. All right. So what do you get when you mix white flour and water? And um, if you haven't done it, I highly recommend you do it. Take some white flour and mix it in water. Basically, you have glue. They used to put wallpaper up with it. Get it? So um, this is not what you want in your gut. Basically, with white flour, what you eat on Monday doesn't come out until Friday, at which point you need hemorrhoid preparations, uh, bathroom deodorizers, and a whole lot of uh, magazine subscriptions. So I'm going to save you a whole lot of money. All right? This is about pooping. This is about getting things moving through your system. If you're eating whole grains, what you eat on Monday, what you eat on Monday, uh, comes out Tuesday, Wednesday at the latest, and you're in out. It's just kind of like a horse. You know, horses eat a whole lot of fiber. You know, they're just eating grass and stuff. Yeah, they poop while they walk. All right. So what I'm telling you is, um, your plumbing will work so much better if you get this stuff out of your life. All right. So. White flour, there's no nutrition in that either. You're just losing all kinds of stuff. You're losing all kinds of B vitamins, um, all kinds of minerals, uh, on and on. I could go on forever. That's, that's an hour lecture in and of itself. But I'm not going to do that because we've got 15 minutes today. So I'm going to move on to sweeteners. So that white sugar thing. Yep, white sugar is eight times more addictive than cocaine. If you had any wonderment about that... Um, Check it out. The, month, the minute white sugar is in your house, it's calling out to you. It's talking to you. It's saying, come, eat me. Um, so uh, that's how I got started in this business. I was, um, I was sick, and I was eating a ton, of, uh, a ton of sugar. I was eating white flour as well, but a ton of sugar. Uh, and it, it took me down. So I promise you that... Um, that Sugar is enemy number one, without question. I cannot tell you how many disease processes are associated with sugar and how many people feel so much better off sugar. So I dare you, take one week, just one week, and go 100% off white, white flour and white sugar. And just watch how you feel. Watch your energy, watch your... Um, God, I've, I've, I had... I was in my... I was like 21 when I tried this. I had no idea my knees had been stiff. See, if you don't know what you don't know, how are you supposed to know? So watch your body. Watch what changes. Watch if stiffness goes away. If um, Watch your moods. Watch your energy. All that stuff. Sugar can affect every bit of it. Also, the minute you eat sugar, your immune system is cut in half, 50% um, down uh, with your immune system for five hours after eating sugar. So everyone wonders, gee, why does everyone get sick over the holidays? Well, that's it. Uh, you eat sugar, you're, you're creaming your immune system. And we got sick people all over the place. All right? So, um, so that's the white flour, white sugar deal. Vegetable oils. Oh, holy cow. Um, I want you to go to your cupboard and take a look at all the foods that are sitting in your cupboard that have vegetable oil of some sort. Safflower oil, sunflower oil. Um, look at all the different vegetable oils. Cottonseed oil. All that stuff, all right? Here's the deal with vegetable oil. Um, a little seed, a little vegetable seed, um, has a little bit of oil in it, and that oil is to create a whole new plant. That's what the oil is all about. Um, but the minute you crack that seed open and expose that oil to air, light, and heat, it goes rancid pretty much immediately. And if you were to go to a, a manufacturing plant where they're extracting oil on a regular basis, 
<clears throat> I promise what you're gonna see, uh, well, <laughs> you don't have to see anything. Your nose is gonna tell you, this is incredibly uh, toxic stuff, all right? It is, um, it is the epitome of rancid oil and your basic greasy spoon, okay? So, so you say, well, wait a minute, Sarah. You know, the oil that I've got sitting on my shelf doesn't smell rancid at all. It smells fine. And you know what the answer to that is? The answer is uh, they deodorize and bleach the oil before they send it outside the factory. So there's your answer there. All that oil is absolutely rancid, and it just creates um, sludge in your in your in in all of your blood vessels. You can actually see it when they extract. Um, when they take blood and it's sitting in a vial, you can see that stuff rise to the top. It's just plain sludge. So get vegetable oil out of your life. Now, the fruit oils are a different story. The olive oil, the coconut oil, avocado oil, um, those tend to handle heat and they're easier to extract. So you don't have to use as much heat to extract them. So, um, however, again, my recommendation is don't be heating them a whole lot. Much better to cook the food first Add a little, bo you know, add a bit of oil afterwards. Um, ghee is another, uh, actually, a fat. It's an animal fat, and it's it's clarified butter. It's what uh, people of of India use a whole lot, and it's just uh, it's a wonderful oil and fat to use. If you take butter, you know how when you melt butter and then it uh, and then you put it back in the refrigerator, and there's a uh, there's a hard layer on the top, and then a, a, a a liquidy layer underneath. Well, this is how they prepare ghee in India. Um, they will then pour that liquid off. That liquid is the ghee, um, and the top part is sort of the protein. So ghee is a very pure oil, and even people who have dairy reactions often can handle ghee, uh, ghee just fine. So um, ghee is another wonderful option, as well as just organic butter. Um, that's all. Those are all fine cooking oils, and uh, fat from a well-raised animal, and which leads me into what are we doing with our animals in this country, and what are you eating, and do you have a clue what you're eating? Um, if when our when our animals are, I, I just don't even know how to begin this. I don't know of any religion that promotes the abuse of animals, and if you really understand how we are raising our animals in this country for the production of meat. Um, there is no way to look at this other than extraordinary animal abuse. And if you have not um, watched the YouTube Meet Your Meat, M-E-E-T, your M-E-A-T, uh, the, um, there's another great one, which I can't think of right now, but at any rate, um, I'll, I'll post that for you. Um, these are really important. They're not fun to watch, but I think we all need to be informed about what's going on. Therefore, for many reasons, one, it, it, to me, it's just um, pretty dang logical that if you, if an animal is abused, uh, if they are sick, uh, why would you want to eat that meat? Uh, we take cows. Bessie the cow used to be able to stand out in the back pasture and she'd last for 20 years and every once in a while the bull would catch her and she'd get pregnant and you'd grab the milk and make some cheese out of it and stuff like that. Um, and that would be very precious stuff. But she would last for 20 years, at which point you would slaughter her uh, humanely and, uh, and use that meat. That meat then, not so many hormones running around in old Bessie at age 20. Uh, so you weren't, you weren't eating meat that was surging with hormones and all that stuff. Now, fast forward to 2017, you've got Bessie, they've now bred Bessie, so she produces three times the milk that a normal cow should produce, at which point her udder is dragging on the ground, getting, uh, uh, getting abraded, uh, infected, uh, they've got to feed her tons of antibiotics. She's fed food that is not natural to a cow. Grains are not um, a food for cows, and it actually makes them sick. Uh, these cows are basically in a stanchion. The grand majority of their life, they're either pregnant or they're being milked, period. So about age four, they're exhausted, and they're taken off to, uh, to the slaughterhouse. Often, they can't walk into the slaughterhouse. They're dragged in. They often have tumors. They're very weak cows. The, uh, 
the butchers in the slaughterhouse will say often they can take the bones of these animals and break them in their bare hands. What does that tell you about the quality of that meat? So if I were to drag a cow in here right now that couldn't stand up, that, was, that didn't look well, that looked completely stressed, uh, would you be buying that meat? That's your hamburger meat. That's what you're buying at a local, at a local grocery store. Is that really what you want to put into your body? So, what I recommend is pasture-raised animals. Learn where the local uh, farms are that do that. Many large grocery stores do have um, organic pasture-raised meat. Pay attention. Look it up. Be pro You've got to be pro proactive. You know, we used to just buy food. You know, it was just simple food. That is not the case anymore. You've got to really understand where your food is coming from. Uh, because there is a lot of uh, a lot of fluff going out there, so so think about that baby of yours. Think about the baby that you're that you're creating, and what kind of what kind of food are you you know putting in your system? And the last thing, there's well, there's two more. The pasture raised food, actually, pasture raised meat is higher in omega threes, and omega threes are extraordinarily important essential fatty acids. Nutri-Pro cod liver oil is a cod liver oil that I recommend because it's a very natural cod liver oil, naturally has vitamin D and vitamin A. They didn't take it out and put it back in. They literally used the naturally formed cod liver oil. Um, this has been used for century upon century and it's a very mild peppermint lemon flavor. I highly recommend it and I'll post that for you as well. Um, but And the last point I've got is GMOs, genetically modified organisms. This is like a two-hour lecture. But uh, imagine that we have created, uh, we've created plants that can produce their own pesticide. That's one. And then we've created plants, this is by genetic modification, then we've created plants that can resist pesticides way better than others. So what we've got going on, um, you know, they when they created plants, and this is corn, soy, uh, two huge products that are in, if you go through the middle aisles of a supermarket, pretty much everything you pick up has some form of corn, corn starch, soy, soy oil, oil. Check your, check your cupboards. It's there. If it doesn't say organic or non-GMO, I promise you it's genetically modified. We know now that the genetic modification of these, of these crops does get into our gut. They said, no, 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 it only affects vegetable matter. Well, they forgot that we've got about six pounds of bacteria in our gut that perform much more like a plant than an animal. And it indeed does affect them. We are seeing it in our systems and we know that it affects your gut flora. Your gut flora, that those bacteria in your intestinal tract are the center of the universe for your health and your baby's health. I cannot emphasize that enough. So please vote in your basket. What you put in your, in your grocery basket is a vote for, yeah, no, we're not doing this to our children. And our children are getting weaker and weaker. They're, how many people do you know with intestinal issues in this country? And the GMOs are associated with that. So um, please avoid those. And I'm, I've pretty much out of time and I don't want to hang you up too long, but I'd love to have a conversation. And, you know, feel free to ask me questions, whatever. That baby of yours is just one of the most precious commodities we have in this country. And you are one of the great people who are trying to educate yourself by even listening to me. So I, I you know, I really celebrate you and what you're doing. So I hope we can get a conversation going here and get you guys fired up around eating good food, feeding your baby good food, and we're, you know, I'll get into babies and all that, but you know, I mentioned the gut today and our next session is gonna be really focusing in on the profound effect of a gut that's healthy versus a gut that's not healthy. And um, so I'm going to sign off for now, and I'll be around to answer your questions. And you guys have a great day. See ya.